Hi, welcome to part three of this video series about osteoporosis. I'm Dr. Keith McCormick. In parts one and two, I explain bone remodeling and how resorption and formation must stay in perfect balance for bone to remain healthy. I also talked about chronic systemic inflammation, the crux of all chronic disease and how it uncouples remodeling and leads to bone loss. Now in this third video, I'll talk about some compounds that go into our products at OsteoNaturals and how they can help you regain your bone health. I'll be showing you how these vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and herbs can balance in the interaction between the immune and the bone remodeling systems and how they can address what I consider the five greatest nutritional needs for people with bone loss. The first of these needs is that uh, the need for bioavailable effective dosages of bone specific vitamins and minerals. Number two, the need to promote calcium absor absorption and utilization and improve bone health. Number three, the need to neutralize the body's pH balance and, and reduce the destructive effects of chronic low level metabolic acidosis. Four, the need to counter the destructive effects of oxidative stress the, and chronic systemic inflammation. And you can do this by reducing the pro-inflammatory cytokines. Number five, you need to normalize the molecular, molecular signaling between the immune and the bone remodeling systems. You see, to regain bone health, you, you'll need a lot more than just calcium and vitamin D because these nutrients, as important as they are, they just cannot accomplish all five of these tasks. The only way you'll be able to meet all five of these needs, the only way you'll be able to really improve your bone health and reduce your fracture risk is to use a nutritional approach that's multidimensional. It's, it's backed by hard science. And this is the approach that must be able to affect all those aspects of, of bone physiology that have come under assault during the development of osteoporosis. So, Years ago, when I was first diagnosed with severe osteoporosis and my bones were, they were literally crumbling underneath me, the doctors I consulted, almost like reflex, handed me prescriptions for bisphosphonates to kill off the osteoclasts in my bones. But even back then, this didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. I couldn't see how killing off cells, the cells that were actually important for normal bone remodeling to occur, cells that if they were incapacitated for years and years on end, would eventually lead to reduced function of what bone I did have left inside me. It just didn't seem to make like very good long-term uh, sense to me, long-term solution. So focusing only on improving bone density and doing nothing to improve, improve the health of your bones, it didn't make a lot of sense. And then when you consider chronic systemic inflammation, the approach of simply killing off the osteoclast makes even less sense. By just making my skeleton harder and leaving the systemic inflammation to run berserk, ravaging around through my body, setting me up for some other chronic disease, I couldn't see it. Why not get rid of the systemic inflammation? Why not work to improve the actual health of my skeleton, not just its density, and and if, if the bone health actually improved, then for sure there'd be less risk for breaking. Plus, there's no risk for all those other adverse effects that come with long-term bisphosphonate use. Osteonecrosis of the jaw and leg fractures from increased brittleness that, that the bisphosphonates cause. So now that I've experienced osteoporosis, I've gone through it. I've come out on the other side a lot healthier. I know that there's a lot better way to do this. So, Let's get back to what we talked about in part two of this series and, and see what can happen when we plug in some specific nutrients. Let's just see how they can affect the bone remodeling and how they can affect the bone immune system interaction and what they can do to improve skeletal health. It seems like when you mention osteoporosis, everybody wants to know first thing about calcium. It is certainly important and I recommend calcium malate or a glycinate chelate because they have the best bioavailability and they're the easiest on the stomach, the easiest to absorb. But you can see 
from what we've talked about in these last three videos, that if you have chronic systemic inflammation and loads of rankle and pro-inflammatory cytokines floating all through your body, then your bones will still suffer. You're, you will still have bone loss, even when you take an adequate amount of calcium. So normalizing bone remodeling, reducing the oxidative stress within you, taming that chronic systemic inflammation, this is where your emphasis on healing bones should be. And about things like potassium and, and trace minerals, are they important? Yes, they're extremely important. Why? Because potassium and trace minerals, they help alkalinize your body. And when your body's acidic, it's destructive to your, to your bones. It, it contributes to the systemic inflammation. Trace minerals are not only important cofactors for bone metabolism, but together with potassium, they help keep your body's pH just slightly alkaline. And this lowers the systemic inflammation and helps you limit your, your, the bone breakdown. Well, if you look closely inside a bone, there's this thin, mineral-rich layer, a membrane that covers the bones, and it's loaded with potassium and sodium. And so when your body becomes a little bit acidic, if, if you eat too high of acid foods, low alkaline diet, don't, eat, don't get enough vegetables in your diet, or you're under chronic stress, um, even, even the process of going through menopause, it causes your body to become acidic. One of your first things your body does is tap that little membrane that's around, that surrounds bone, that membrane, because it's very high in potassium and sodium, two alkaline minerals. And that's how it gets the body, the blood, back into being alkaline again. And the important thing about this membrane is that it's tapped before your body resorts to actually breaking down your bones to get at their calcium. So if you can keep the body in a constant supply of potassium and natural bioorganic sodium, not salt, but bioorganic bio sodium, which, by the way, our Osteo Mineral Whey product is very high in this, uh, then it will help keep this membrane around bone and your bones in general a lot healthier. So, Let's look at two important vitamins. Vitamin D helps you absorb calcium. Vitamin K, as we talked about in the last video, activates osteocalcin to put the calcium into your bones where it should be. If you look at this x-ray of a 79-year-old woman, she has a compression fracture here at T6. It's a classic example of what happens when a person doesn't get enough vitamin D or vitamin K. You can practically, practically see right through the uh, individual vertebrae in her spine because they have so little calcium. And if you look at the soft tissues beside her spine, notice that they're starting to calcify. This is what low levels of vitamin K can do. So the vitamin K, and especially the vitamin K2 in its MK4 and MK7 forms, are critical for bone health. Okay, what do we do with this problem? All this chronic systemic inflammation, all the incredible increase in rankle and pro-inflammatory cytokines, what if you could take something every day that would reduce this and not only help you get rid of the reactive oxygen species, the, the free radicals that increase the inflammation, but also allow your body to fight off disease? What if we could reduce the oxidative stress reduce the pro-inflammatory cytokines, limit the NF-kappa B and the activation of those osteoclasts, reduce the bone resorption, and increase bone formation. Well, you can. So let's just look at the research, what it says about the antioxidant alpha-lipoic acid. Linus Pauling Institute, 2008. Findings were that it reduces reactive oxygen species, which are free radicals. It improves the body's own stress response path pathways. 2005, Journal of Bone and Mineral Research, reduces oxidative stress. Reduces pro-inflammatory cytokines. That's 2006, free radical biology and medicine. Limits NF-kappa B activation. That's 2007, 2010 from bone. Reduces bone resorption. Journal of Immunology, 2006. Limits the death of the osteoblast and it increases bone formation. Nutrition Research, 2011. Pretty impressive. How about another compound? Let's look at 
what N N acetylcysteine can do for you. NAC is another very powerful antioxidant that once again neutralizes the free radicals, the reactive oxygen species, but it also improves the body's innate antioxidant capacity, just like the alpha lipoic acid did. And here's what the research says about N acetylcysteine. Journal Clinical Investigation 2003 reduces osteoclast formation and bone resorption. Berberine is another compound that can be used to promote bone health. And it's incredible because this alkaloid from, from various herbs is, has this rare ability to not only reduce bone resorption, but also to stimulate bone formation. Look at these findings from different research projects. Decreases rankle in NF-kappa B in the osteoclast, 2008. It inhibits bone resorption from 2008. Inhibits osteoclast, increases bone density. All these things are really important for improving bone density, improving bone health. And what's so important about understanding all these compounds is that in their effect on bone remodeling is modulating. It's not like the bisphosphonates that completely shut down the osteoclast, but these compounds, they all modulate the remodeling process. They modulate the osteoclastic activity. They don't stop the osteoclast from doing their job. They simply bring them back into control, reduce their over-aggressiveness. They stop them from gouging out way too much bone, and instead they, they regulate it. They, they promote the bone health. So just quickly, I'll mention four more compounds um, that are also extremely beneficial for regaining bone health. ECGC from green tea. Here's the findings. It inhibits rankle. Molecular pharmacology, 2010. Limits osteoclast formation. Enhances osteoblast formation. And then another one, milk basic protein. This is a fraction of the whey protein and it has a very powerful effect on bone. It promotes bone formation, suppresses resorption, increases bone density. Osteoporosis International, 2007. It inhibits rankle. Taurine, another very important compound, is found in extremely high amounts in healthy bone, not so high in unhealthy bone. So you need to take it and it helps limit rankle it preserves and activates osteoblasts, postpones the actual aging of cells within your bone marrow. That's in findings from molecular uh, cell bi bi biochemistry in 2012. And finally, the last compound, milk thistle. This is another very powerful antioxidant that lowers oxidative stress, limits the activation of NF-kappa B, and limits the osteoclast formation and promotes the osteoblasts. So these findings from all these research projects show how powerful these, this lineup of, uh, of compounds is and how they can pr help you promote bone health. And Austin Naturals products provide all these compounds and more in effective dosages. So I invite you to learn more about osteoporosis by browsing through our website at osteonaturals.com and and while you're there, I, I hope you'll please visit my blog. I write about a lot of different, very important uh, things regarding osteoporosis. And I think you'll see that osteonaturals can make a difference. We're, we're, we're really here for you. Uh, so please check us out uh, because we truly are where bone strength begins. So please take care, stay strong. I'm Dr. McCormick.